Hi there, this is Hugh T. Thank you for joining me for part three of my papillary thyroid cancer. So February the 11th, Friday, 2011, I had my surgery to remove my total, I had a total thyroidectomy done. So what started out on that day to be a very simple procedure, my mom and dad went with me, um, turned into a big ordeal. Um, let's see. So I get done. And from what I can remember from that day, it was all a very big blur. Um, whenever I got out of surgery and I was in the recovery room, my neck was really tight. I mean, it was so tight, I could not even move it. It just, it felt like I had a big brace on. Um, and then I had two scissions, one here, and then I had a little one. And on the little one, there's this drain that comes from it with like a ball that sucks any type of liquid out. So it helps to prevent infections. Um, so I finally get a room like 7 p.m. because my hospital was really super busy that day and there was no rooms. Um, so I get up into my room. Like I said, I can't really remember what happened that day. And then Saturday comes and then my doctor comes in to see me. He wants to go over the pathology report and um, just to see how I was doing and let me know how I was doing. So on the pathology report, the clinical diagnosis actually said thyroid cancer. So I thought it was hilarious because that's why I was there because we knew we had that I had cancer um, and that my tumor measured four by three by two centimeters. But the one thing that was really good on my end was it was like a hard boiled egg. So if this was my thyroid, the inner part was the cancer and it literally came like a hair from touching the wall. So that meant that there, from what they could see, there was no fillers that had went out. Um, cancer kind of is like a plant and they have roots that come out and they just start infecting and just going everywhere. So there was none of that. So that was really, really good. But unfortunately in the pathology report, it stated that there was two pieces of parathyroid, um, which meant one could either have gotten half or there's actually two separate pieces. It didn't state. So how your parathyroid works, you have four parathyroids and so you have two on the top and two on the bottom and they're right there in where your thyroid they're like right in that area so your parathyroid helps to process calcium that your body needs so big deal calcium you know like how important is it bone teeth hair um, didn't realize that your calcium actually helps the electrolytes in your body and it helps to send signals to make things work, like your muscles to contract, your heart to beat, things like that. So whenever Saturday, so on Saturday, he said, you know what, your calcium is a little bit low, so we just want to keep you in one more day. So here I'm ready to go. I'm all excited. My dad is actually building a garden for me. I've always wanted a garden, so he wanted to give me something to look forward to. So he's building this big, beautiful garden with the help of my husband and my kids. Um, so they're all out there doing that. Um, so I want to get home. I want to spend time with my family. And he says, we're going to keep you until Sunday. So I said, all right, you know, we'll wait until Sunday. And at this point, he's taking calcium a.m. and p.m. So I'm getting calcium drawn twice a day, my blood, I mean, to check on my calcium. So on Sunday, my calcium now has fallen even more, and it's 6.23. Your calcium levels, they want an 8.7 to a 10.4. That's the normal range. And whenever I had went in, I was, I think, somewhere in like the mid to high eights. So this is how far my calcium had dropped. And he told me if my calcium had dropped below six and went into the fives, I'd be going into the intensive care where they can monitor my heart to make sure that I don't have a heart attack. Um, they want to make sure that I wasn't going to have any seizures. Um, so again, your calcium like regulates all of that. It's really important. Um, so I actually learned a little something with that. And of course, anytime anything goes good, it's bound that something is going to go bad. So even though I had a really good surgery, um, the cancer was contained, of course, now I have to deal with this whole calcium issue. So he had me on 5,000 milligrams of calcium a day, which is a lot. Um, and then also on something called citral. Um, this is a really high strength, like vitamin D. So some people have an issue with processing the calcium. Um, and so they need vitamin D. 
So whenever my mom would come, she would come and meet me and we'd go up, we would go to the patio for lunch at the hospital. And I would go in a little sundress and try to get some natural vitamin D also. Um, drinking a lot of milk, which luckily I love. So I was drinking a ton of milk. I just wanted to get home. I was eating a lot of ice cream. So I probably gained like a good 10 pounds while I was in the hospital. Um, so now at this point, gosh, I'm probably like on Monday. Um, calcium is kind of like in the morning it would go up, but then at night it would fall. And it kept on happening like that. And my husband, he was so frustrated with the doctor, even though I had a really great doctor, I don't know if he just didn't know or if he just didn't want to tell us. Every day it was, your wife will go home tomorrow. My husband said, when is my wife going to come home? She'll go home tomorrow. Um, so I don't know if he just didn't realize how bad it was or wanted to tell me. Maybe you just want to keep my hopes up. So come Thursday, Tuesday, um, the 15th, he comes in in that morning, and I'm waiting for my results from... Uh, Monday night and I am dressed and ready to go. My hair is down. It is fixed. I have makeup on. I have my little jogging out suit on, outfit on. I am ready. And he walks in and he looks at me. He said, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to keep you. You're leaving, aren't you? And as soon as he said that, I knew. I said, it dropped, didn't it? He goes, it did. He goes, I need to keep you in here one more day. Um, he's all, I really would like you to stay. Will you please stay? And I told him, I said, if you need me to stay, I am staying, I said, but I just needed to feel normal for a day. I needed to get prettied up and not feel like I was in this hospital. And at this point every day now I'm walking around the hospital, I'm making friends, I'm trying to keep myself busy because I was going batty in the hospital. Um, so I was walking with my little IV with me because I had to carry that everywhere with me because they were actually giving me also calcium through my IV. Whenever it would start dropping, they would give me like a little dose in there. Um, so now at this point, gosh, I'm like kind of feeling down in the dumps. Um, it was really sweet. My son and his school, they did a little get well soon. They gave me this on, I think it was on Monday. And so they all like kind of put stickers and did something fun in there. So that was really nice. I thought that was really sweet. His teacher let him do that and everybody put a little sticker and he brought that to me. They, they let my kids come in for like three minutes one day. Um, actually, it was Valentine's Day that I was in there. On Sunday was, no, Monday. That Monday was Valentine's Day. And my son's birthday, he had just turned seven. It was on the, the Sunday. It was on February the 13th. So it was really kind of a depressing time for me being in the hospital, missing my son's birthday, missing Valentine's Day with my husband. We are going on nine years of being married, so it would have been nice to spend it with him. Um, but it was nice because he came in and, you know, spent a little bit of time with me. The boys came in. Um, so what else had happened? Oh, my gosh. It was just the whole calcium thing was just so depressing and such a downer. And like I said, we just wanted answers to what, what was going on. So now at this point, I'm realizing that my calcium is probably going to be a big issue for me. I had some really good nurses whenever I was in there. One nurse actually printed all of this stuff up off the internet for me. Everything talking about calcium. Um, I've heard that it can come back in two weeks, two months, two years. Um, so I was really positive about that, knowing that, you know, there is a possibility. So now, now what? Now I'm waiting for my radiation to get done. Um, I'm not on my hormones yet, so I'm feeling a little bit tired, or I was feeling tired while I was in there. Now I am. Um, the thyroid medicine I had, they didn't give any to me while I was in the hospital. I don't know if we just forgot about that. I didn't even ask. I was just so caught up in my, my thyroid issue, and parathyroid issue, that is. Um, so besides that, um, I'm now home. I'm doing well. Um, I'm still on a lot of calcium, which then has caused other problems. Um, calcium really stops you up. It makes it extremely hard to go to the bathroom. So I had to deal with that for not going for seven days and just my stomach really hurting and having to then take care of that issue. Um, just really being aware of the type of you know, calcium that I am taking in. And with calcium, you just can't take all your calcium for the day at once. It needs to be spread out throughout the day. So I would, you know, have, you know, some milk for breakfast and then, you know, have something but like maybe with some cheese for lunch and then at dinner have some cottage cheese with whatever I was eating. 
Um, so that's it. Bye. Talk to you later.